Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. I've recently seen some discussion online about how the Nintendo Switch 2 display is quite bad. Digital Foundry and a few others have complained of poor motion performance and a lack of true HDR support, despite being advertised as an HDR capable display, which got me thinking. I've tested hundreds of PC gaming monitors over the years, and I have a lot of tools capable of testing displays. I also happen to own a Nintendo Switch 2 and an original Switch 1 LCD model as well. So I thought it might be useful to run these consoles through some basic tests, see how they perform, and analyze the display as someone that spends a lot of time analyzing displays. Now, I don't normally test or review handheld console displays. I pretty much exclusively focus on gaming monitors, and that means our test tools and processes are designed for monitors that we can plug any source device into. You can't do that with a console like the Switch 2. It has to run Nintendo software, so I've tried my best to find ways to test key areas to performance. We're going to test a few important aspects of the Switch 2's LCD, including response times, but obviously this is not going to be a comprehensive review like you'd see from one of our monitor tests. Anyway, let's get into the testing in just a moment. Today's video is brought to you by the Ugreen Nexode 500 watt desktop charger. I love Ugreen chargers. I've got them everywhere. I rely on them around the office and at home. Their latest product is the world's first 500 watt charging station. Up to 240 watts out of a single USB-C port on the top, a further 400 watt USB-C ports and a USB-A for a total simultaneous power output of 500 watts. Power six devices at once thanks to upgraded GAN Infinity chips, broad protocol compatibility, and 11 levels of safety protection. With a huge output capacity, you can fast charge five laptops at the same time, charge a 16-inch MacBook Pro to 60% in 30 minutes, and simplify your charging setup into a single unit. Check the links below to learn more about the Ugreen Nexode 500 watt fast charging station and grab one for yourself today. The Switch 2 uses a 7.9-inch 1080p LCD screen that runs up to 120Hz and supports both variable refresh rates and HDR10. While Nintendo doesn't disclose the display technology being used here, its characteristics point to this being an IPS LCD. Also, while it does support 120Hz, it seems that the vast majority of available games at the moment actually run the screen at 60Hz or lower, and I was unable to perform any proper motion testing at 120Hz because of this. This particular LCD is extremely slow in terms of response time performance. I've seen some people on social media trying to dispute this, but unfortunately, the actual numbers don't lie. It's very, very slow for a modern LCD panel. I ran the Switch 2 through a series of 20 gray to gray transitions, not the usual 110 that we do for monitor testing because the Switch 2 had to be tested manually. And I did find atrocious results. These are gamma corrected numbers that are measured in the same way we test PC gaming monitors. Using our test methodology, I found an average response time across these transitions of 33 milliseconds, with some transitions exceeding 40 milliseconds. These are terrible results and would make the switch to the slowest screen I've tested by a mile, and that's out of 165 displays tested using this methodology. In fact, it's not even really a contest. Some of the slowest LCD monitors that I've tested have reported in with response times in the 15 to 20 millisecond range. The Switch 2 exceeds 30 milliseconds, making other LCDs appear fast in comparison. There is, however, no overshoot to speak of. This makes the Switch 2's LCD significantly slower than the original Switch 1's LCD. The first gen Switch uses a 6.2 inch 720p IPS LCD and it's also quite slow, but with an average response time of 21 milliseconds, it's noticeably faster than the Switch 2. This makes the Switch 2's display roughly 50% slower than the Switch 1, which is quite a significant regression in motion performance despite the increase in refresh rate to 120Hz. Again, I tested both consoles at 60Hz due to testing limitations. While the measured transition time data is definitive about the slowness of the Switch 2's display, it might also be a good idea to look at Blurbuster's UFO test results. As you can see from these images, the Switch 2's LCD is very blurry in motion, with extreme ghost trails following moving objects. There is no definition whatsoever in the UFO, and this is why many astute Switch 2 gamers using the console in handheld mode are complaining about the screen looking blurry and producing smeared visuals. Now, compared to the Switch 1, you might not immediately notice much of a difference because both results are overwhelmingly blurry, However, on close inspection, it's clear the Switch 2 is worse. The bottom white bar has a much longer blur trail on the Switch 2, and the blur behind the UFO's yellow body extends much further, almost to the edge of the red body. Inside the UFO's cockpit, there is also less definition, as pretty much every element is smeared together. 
At 60 Hz, due to sample and hold motion blur, it's very difficult to get a clear image, even with extremely fast response times like you'd get on an OLED. On the right side of this image, you'll see a desktop OLED monitor running at 60 Hz, and it's still pretty blurry. But the difference in clarity between an OLED and the Switch 2 is night and day. You can begin to see that the white bar at the top and bottom of the UFO actually contains text on the OLED, although the text is unreadable at 60 hertz at this speed of motion, and there's more definition in the UFO. You can see hints of the vertical black lines within the red UFO's body, you can clearly see the joystick in the cockpit, and you can make out alien features like its ears. In addition, there is practically no blur trail behind the UFO or the white boxes, and there's clear separation between the UFO and the crash test dummy marker. I don't own a Switch OLED to see whether this is how its OLED screen performs, but I would assume it gets reasonably close based on the OLED testing I've done. And if Nintendo does refresh the Switch 2 with an OLED screen at some point, that's the sort of advantage you'll get. Also in this image at 60Hz is a modern IPS LCD gaming monitor, the Gigabyte M27UP, which I'll be reviewing on the channel shortly. It just so happened to be a monitor I had handy to run this test, and across our 110 transition sample average, it produced an average response time of just 6 milliseconds. So to recap, Switch 2 is at 33 milliseconds in a 20 sample average, Switch 1 at 21 milliseconds, and a typical LCD gaming monitor at 6 milliseconds. A 6 millisecond LCD at 60 hertz is much clearer than either of the Switch consoles. Again, you'll see much less blur behind the moving UFO, better definition inside the UFO cockpit, separation between the UFO and crash test markers, and you can sort of tell there's something in the white box. A better result than the Switch 2, but not as clear as an OLED. That's the difference a 5 times faster LCD can create at 60 hertz, and I think you'd see far fewer issues with motion on the Switch 2's LCD had it performed like this. So why is the Switch 2 LCD so slow? Well, one thing is clear, Nintendo are not using any form of overdrive on this panel. Overdrive is essential for fast response times on modern IPS LCD gaming monitors, and when you turn off overdrive on monitors, response times are typically much worse, though even still usually not nearly as bad as the Switch 2. My best guess as to why Nintendo haven't implemented overdrive is to conserve power. Overdrive applies a higher voltage to the LCD layer to force it to transition faster. Higher voltage equals higher power consumption. That's fine on a desktop monitor plugged into the wall, but not fine on a handheld device with a tiny 19 watt hour battery. In addition, I suspect the display might be using especially conservative voltage tuning to further improve battery life, which would lead to even slower than expected native response time results. Given the Switch 2's display is larger, brighter, higher resolution, and higher refresh rate than its predecessor, this seems like an area that's been traded off to keep battery life in check. With response times in the 30 millisecond range, the Switch 2 fails to achieve adequate refresh rate compliance at 60 hertz, which means it's effectively bottlenecked by its response times. At 60 hertz, the display refreshes every 16.7 milliseconds, but the screen takes around twice as long as that or more to actually finish transitioning from one color to the next. In the meantime, in between those you know, display refreshes, it might have been moving on to display something else, but the display actually hasn't finished transitioning by the time it has to move on to show something else. And this is why blur trails persist for multiple frames in some of the slow motion videos you might have seen. While I couldn't test 120Hz properly, bad refresh compliance at 60Hz means it's unlikely you'll see the full benefit of increased motion clarity in games that use the 120Hz capabilities, because the response times will be far too slow to support 120Hz. There will be a smoothness advantage and lower levels of sample and hold motion blur, but slow response times will still cause significant blur across the screen. And this sort of blur is not something you get on 120Hz gaming monitors, the sorts of LCDs that we test here on the channel usually. Moving on now to some other tests I performed, the Switch 2 screen is brighter than the previous model, increasing from around 320 nits with the Switch 1 to around 430 nits with the new Switch 2 LCD. Nintendo have calibrated the Switch 2 to the same white point as the Switch 1, approximately 7900K, which gives it a cold tone relative to a 6500K white point that is used in most display standards. I don't know whether this is a preference on the part of Nintendo's engineers or whether it's to preserve image compatibility with the Switch 1, given the Switch 2 can play basically all Switch 1 games. My unit had a contrast ratio of 1068 to 1, which again is very similar to the Switch 1, which measured in at 1060 to 1. This gives the screen a poor black level in line with other IPS LCD screens that we've tested. However, the Switch 2 screen has much better reflection handling, so in most environments the apparent black depth will be lower, giving the screen a richer and higher contrast look. The Switch 1's LCD is absolutely horrible at handling ambient light and ends up reflecting a ton of it, often making blacks look grey in all conditions other than pitch black rooms. 
One of the main improvements from the Switch 1 to Switch 2 LCD outside of the size and resolution is the support for a wide color gamut. I measured 98% coverage of DCI-P3 on the Switch 2 LCD compared to 79% on the Switch 1. Both models have full coverage of Rec. 709, however that's where the Switch 1's color gamut ends, giving it a standard color gamut suitable for SDR content. The Switch 2 extends that to cover P3, which is one of the things the display needs for HDR content. The Switch doesn't appear to perform color management, so Switch 1 games, designed for its Rec. 709 display, have increased saturation when run on the Switch 2, giving the new screen a more vibrant look. This is because the colors are expanded to fill the wider gamut of the Switch 2's LCD, instead of the Switch 2 emulating Rec. 709 colors in older software. While this might make content look subjectively better, doing this is less accurate and can create oversaturation issues. One example of this oversaturation, and it might be hard to see on camera, is comparing the logos of Mario Kart 8 on the Switch 2 and Switch 1 LCDs. On the Switch 2, Mario's face is more orange than it should be, whereas on the Switch 1, his face has a more natural skin tone. Comparing that to the new Mario Kart World logo, and this Mario on the Switch 2 is less saturated, and his skin tone looks more in line with the old Mario Kart 8 logo when it was displayed on the Switch 1. I think this is because the designers of this new logo created it with the new P3 capable display in mind, whereas the old logo was designed for the Rec. 709 Switch 1 screen and looks oversaturated on the Switch 2. Of course, in many examples, this higher level of saturation and wider amount of colors makes the new screen look subjectively better. Mario's outfit gets redder, Luigi's gets greener, Rainbow Road pops more, and the saturation definitely helps some art for some games like Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. I think most casual gamers will prefer the way the new screen looks, and games that are designed for the Switch 2 will adjust to the way colors are rendered on its screen. I should also note the screen is wide gamut regardless of whether you set it to use HDR or not in the settings. One of the more controversial aspects to the Switch 2's display is whether it actually supports HDR or not. I mean, technically it does, it accepts and displays an HDR signal. From a hardware perspective though, in my opinion, this is not an HDR capable display. It simply lacks the required hardware to properly display HDR content, and it has few, if any, meaningful upgrades to extend its capabilities beyond a typical SDR experience. The main issue with HDR on this LCD is contrast. The Switch 2's LCD has a poor native contrast ratio and no local dimming to increase the contrast in HDR scenarios. It doesn't even have edge lit local dimming. As far as I can tell, there is just no dimming whatsoever. This means in HDR content, the maximum local contrast ratio you'll see is around 1060 to 1. For the best HDR experience, you'll need a contrast ratio that exceeds 50,000 to 1. So the Switch 2 doesn't even get close to that. With no real contrast advantage over an SDR screen, the true benefit of HDR, its high dynamic range, so large differences between bright and dark shown at the same time, that benefit is completely missing. Peak brightness is also insufficient for HDR, maxing out at 430 nits. The screen is brighter than the Switch 1, so in a side-by-side -side comparison, it will look brighter in the HDR mode, but 400 nits is not bright when we're talking about HDR. At best, the Switch 2 screen in the HDR mode looks like an SDR screen with the brightness cranked up to a higher level, which is not the same as true HDR. This can be subjectively better to look at, but it's just not in the same ballpark as real HDR screens. Therefore, in my opinion, this is a fake HDR display. Now, there are some areas that are enhanced in the HDR mode compared to the SDR mode. As we've talked about earlier, this is a wide gamut display, so it can show more colors and appear more vibrant than, say, the Switch 1's SDR display. The HDR mode can also benefit from a different gamma curve known as PQ, which allocates more data to dark shades, increasing depth and reducing banding in darker parts of content. This shouldn't be confused with an actual increase in display contrast though, it's just changing the way the image is displayed, similar to using a contrast slider in an image editing app. This change can fool some people into thinking a fake HDR display is doing a good job of showing HDR content because it might appear a bit more contrasty, but again, this is not the same as real HDR shown on a proper HDR screen. With this level of hardware, I don't think Nintendo should have advertised the Switch 2 screen as being HDR. It's a better display from a colors and brightness perspective, sure, but it's just not real HDR. The Switch 2 supporting HDR is much more relevant for its docked capabilities when hooked up to actual HDR TVs. So as someone that largely analyzes desktop gaming monitors, what do I think of the Switch 2's display overall? Well, I mean, it's not the best display I've ever seen, but we are talking about a handheld gaming device. So 
Comparisons to desktop monitors only fare up to a certain point. This display is clearly not on par with a good quality gaming monitor, even some of the relatively cheap ones we've reviewed easily outperform this, but I don't necessarily think it's bad for a handheld system. Compared to the original Switch 1 LCD, the Switch 2 is generally an upgrade. It's larger and higher resolution, which makes it more enjoyable to use. It's brighter and has a wider color gamut, which gives it additional vibrance, and it subjectively produces better looking images because of this. It has better reflection handling, so while the contrast ratio isn't improved, in actual usage conditions, it has better apparent black depth, and it supports more advanced technologies like variable refresh and a 120Hz refresh rate. The only real downgrade between the Switch 1 and Switch 2 launch screen is response time performance. The Switch 2 is definitely much slower, and both its 60Hz and 120Hz refresh rates are bottlenecked because of this. The response times really are atrocious. This is a very blurry screen in fast motion, and its new 120Hz capability only has a limited smoothness advantage because of response time issues. Does this make it an overall worse display than the Switch 1? Uh, it depends what capabilities you prefer. If you play faster games and are sensitive to motion, this screen will be extremely disappointing. Uh, if you don't care too much about that, I think you will find the larger size and better colors a significant upgrade. Now, is this display good enough in general for a handheld released in 2025? I guess that depends on how you look at it. I'm not overly familiar with the handheld market, but Nintendo did release the Switch OLED back in 2021 for $350. And I think those coming from the OLED model of the previous version to this new LCD will see it as a downgrade. The new Switch 2 screen is large and higher resolution, but the Switch 1 OLED, I'm assuming based on other OLED testing, has a much higher contrast ratio and better motion performance. At the same time, the Steam Deck OLED has a 7.4 inch 1280 by 800 90Hz OLED, and it retails for $550 US dollars, $100 more than the Switch 2. So you could say another relatively mainstream OLED handheld costs more for a higher quality display. In an ideal world, Nintendo would have used an OLED of similar size and resolution to this LCD for the Switch 2, and this would have made it much better. And I suspect down the line, they will release a refreshed Switch 2 with an OLED panel to try and double dip, get a second console purchase out of Switch 2 owners that were disappointed with the LCD in the original launch version. And that sort of thing, you know, kind of sucks. You really shouldn't have to buy two consoles just to get a better display later. Whether or not OLED or a better quality display was feasible at launch at the price they were targeting, you know, I've got no idea, but in some way I hope it wasn't feasible because having a legitimate technical or price reason not to include a better display is kind of a more palatable reason than holding back better hardware for a future revision to make more money. That's kind of a scummy move. So I'm hoping that, you know, the Switch 2 has an LCD for some sort of technical reason. I would guess, just based on seeing what we're seeing in terms of OLED and LCD pricing, the LCD screen was probably cheaper, and it probably uses less power as well in the configuration that they've chosen. So potentially with the Switch 2 OLED version, if that ever does come out, they'll have to tweak some of those things, change pricing, change battery, that sort of thing. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Switch 2 display with a bit of testing thrown in. As I sort of mentioned a couple of times throughout this, I normally test PC gaming monitors, not consoles like this, not handhelds like this either. So I'm sure if you wanted a more comprehensive look at the Switch 2 and its display, you can look at the people that do test handhelds in depth. There's lots of great sources of that on the internet. So go check those things out. If you do want to support Monitors Unboxed, the best way to do that is via our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you'll get access to some pretty cool benefits. We've got our monthly live streams. We've got a Discord chat, great place to talk about monitors and display technology. Uh, we've also got BTS content, plenty of other good stuff. Obviously, most of that is going to be for people interested in PC gaming, along with the content that we produce over at Hardware Unboxed. So if you've mostly come to this video just to see how the Switch 2 screen performs, you're not really interested in PC gaming, it's probably not something for you. But if you have a Switch like I do, in addition, to a PC for other sorts of games, then Monitors Unbox and Hardware Unbox might be for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.